It's me, John Park, and we are in my workshop. Thanks, everyone, for coming. It's time for the show, for John Park's workshop, here on Thursday on Adafruit channels everywhere. Uh, thanks for joining us over in the chats, checking out our YouTube chat, and we've got a bunch of people over in there. Hi, uh, S. Kelvin Govinder, nice to see you. Dave Odessa, Lord Helix, Johnny Bergdahl, uh, welcome one and all. Uh, Lord Helix, dig in the music, thank you. Uh, Absolutely. And over in our Discord, if you're somewhere else and you're wondering where the chat is, like Twitch or somewhere like that, Facebook, uh, you can come over to our Discord by heading to adafru.it, adafru.it. Just take the word adafruit, but put a dot. Um, I guess we're Italian. And... Discord slash Discord, adafru.it slash Discord. That will give you an instant invite. Click that link. It'll pop open Discord or a Discord-like web page, and you can jump onto the server and look for the live broadcast chat channel. That's it right there. Uh, and hang out. And we've got a whole bunch of channels. Uh, I cut them off on the side there. I, I cropped that. But there's a whole bunch of channels, such as our uh, general chat, Live broadcast chat, which is this one right here. There's a pet photos channel. There are channels for help with CircuitPython, Arduino, Adafruit IO, 3D printing, audio, Git, hardware design, Linux, single board computers, make code, projects, radio, robotics, wearables, and help with community, as well as the topics for CircuitPython development and more and more and more. So uh, jump on over there. Mondo 5, let's go! Okay, we're going. Here we are. Uh... We've got some fun stuff to do together today, I think. I'm excited about it. I've got a coupon code for you that'll let you get 10% off in the store if you want to buy stuff, and it's good until midnight tonight, I think roughly thereabouts, East Coast, United States of America time. Uh, and I'll hand that, uh, that code off to you in a second. What else do we have? I'll do a little wrap-up of my product pick of the week this week, a couple of new cool little products. Uh, I've got a Circuit Python Parsec for you that I'm very excited about. I kept sticking more and more features in it, but the, the central one is really simple. It's just the, the dressing and the icing and the things that, that got really fun and exciting. Uh, I worked on that most of the morning, in fact. I, 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 uh, I just couldn't stop adding fun features. And yet, there's more I want to do with it. So, uh, yeah, not to hype it up too much, but that'll be a fun Circuit Python Parsec, I think. And then I've got... Um, the melding of worlds. I've been working on this computer perfection project uh, over here. This thing right here. Uh, this is the gutted, gutted one, but that's the uh, computer perfection. You can get these on eBay for anywhere from $25 to $40 or so shipped. Uh, and you can see mine doesn't have the parts in it because we're doing stuff with those. And I was working on... Uh, the button code to use the original PCB, the original buttons from that and, and switches. Uh, and 
meld those into the SynthIO work that Jepler has been working on in the Metro M7 to get real synthesis happening, uh, polyphonic synthesis happening right on the uh, microcontroller in Circuit Python. My demo today, until we start poking around with it, and maybe we'll do some some uh, coding. Uh, is actually just one note at a time, but it can do, I've done 12 notes at a time, which is really, really cool, really impressive. Um, Lars is back there playing Frogger. I guess. Uh, and that'll be, uh, that'll be the, the, the stuff, the show. And of course, I'm always checking out the chat, so let me know if you've got questions or thoughts, suggestions. Uh, and always looking for uh, concepts and ideas to do, especially for the CircuitPython Parsec, but also projects. Um, let's see, do I have, oh, I'll, I'll do a little update. I, I was um, working on this guy last week, making a uh, controller based on Robert uh, Smith. Is it Robert Dale Smith? Sorry, I'm forgetting the middle name now. Um, I'll look that up, in fact. Robert Dale Smith, right? Right? Uh, yes, Robert Dale Smith. Robert's going to do a learn guide for us on this. And uh, he's, he's got some, uh, some cool tricks up his sleeve to share. But this is the conversion of a kid's toy controller into a proper USB-C game controller for Switch for direct input, uh, which is modern computers as well as PS3. Uh, as well as a, uh, what is it, X input? I can't remember. There's a, there's a uh, sort of older controller type as well that works mostly, I think, on Windows. Um, I've built a couple of these, and uh, I also, beyond the one from last week, I added a little button for uh, killing the speaker, but I think we're going to, it's talking a little more, and I think we're going to see if we can reuse one of the um, built-in slide switches to do some uh, audio stuff so that you don't have to cut into the case. So look for that, look forward to that. Uh, and I have some other controller ideas, some other uh, possibly Bluetooth controller, uh, as well as possibly a little retro gaming handheld. Uh, so some ideas in there coming up. All right, so uh, much promised. We've got a coupon code, that's it right there, synth stuffing. That's your coupon code. Use that coupon code on the way out when you head on over to the store. Uh, there's the store. Go to adafruit.com. You'll be at the store. You can check out products. Just click on the products link there and use a little, little uh, link there for view all new products, view all featured products, uh, as well as a bunch of categories. There's some new stuff in the store. Um, maybe pick up some floppy drive costumes. These are adorable. I don't have any yet, but I want some. They're little stickers for your full-size SD cards that will uh, make them look like floppy disks. Adorable. Uh, as well as, this is exciting here, I, couple, I ordered a couple of these, the Adafruit Feather RP2040 with USB Type-A host, which will allow you, I believe this is going to be an Arduino, uh, probably only for the foreseeable future, just because of uh, the, uh, the nature of how it's being done on a PIO to BitBang USB host, but it will allow us to do some cool stuff, particularly plugging in USB devices uh, that you can host, such as MIDI controllers and probably mice, maybe keyboards, and then uh, filter that and, and do things and massage that data and then send it out over uh, UART, over serial, through USB, back to your computer after having done some stuff. Uh, so that's a cool one. Uh, 1750, use your, uh, use your coupon code SYNTHSTUFFING and you'll get 10% off on that, and if my math is correct, that'll be $1.75 less. I won't, I won't attempt the subtraction math necessary to tell you how much that'll be, but uh, you can do that, uh, and you can use this coupon code. Where'd it go? Synth stuffing. Um, synth stuffing, by the way, was one of the proposed names for uh, this topic that Phil Tyrone, PT, uh, had for cramming modern synthesizers or modern electronics into very cool retro futuristic uh, 1970s and 80s uh, consumer electronics toy shells and things like that. So, uh, By the way, while, while I'm on the topic of this, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you again later about that coupon code, but while I'm on the topic of this, I had to show you this is a... Um, look familiar? That is the... Toy right there. 
the computer perfection, uh, being used in an episode of Buck Rogers. And I don't know if it's a 25th century bedpan or ashtray or if it's his doctor. I actually don't know. I haven't, I haven't, if I saw this episode, I don't remember it. I probably saw this episode. I watched all these when I was a kid, but uh, there's Buck Rogers. There's also a film Ice Pirates that, uh, that made use of this gorgeous piece of design here. Uh, so look it up. Look up the computer perfection. Just put that in quotes and you'll find all you want to find. All right. Uh, so let's see. The, uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll mention I have a show on Tuesdays. That's it right there. JP's product pick of the week. And on that, I like to grab something from the store, maybe something new. Cut the price in half with the help of the highly excellent new products team. Thank you, everyone, uh, for doing that every week. We stash some in advance, uh, and then we deploy them when the show starts. So if you're ever wondering, by the way, if you figure out what the product is going to be because you're watching the the YouTube thumbnail or something like that, or the name, I think, on the YouTube, uh, and then it looks like it's not in stock, that's probably because the the stock has entirely um, gone into uh, stashage storage for uh, deploying right when the show starts. And then we cut that price usually in half if it's an Adafruit product, sometimes less if it's if it's uh, something from a outside seller that uh, we don't have those kind of margins on. But no coupon code necessary on that one. You just throw it in your cart and off you go. You get them uh, at a deep discount. And I like to uh, do some little demos with them, show you some code maybe, show you how, how they work. This week it was these two AT Tiny breakout boards that I uh, am very fond of. And here is a little one minute recap. It is the AT Tiny 816 and the AT Tiny 616 breakout boards with Seesaw. I can program this AT Tiny just like it's a baby Arduino. I've simply coded something that is reading button presses on this little step switch and is writing out to that LED. I've got a Cutie Pie and it's plugged in using this DemiQT cable to my ATtiny 1616. I am running these seven potentiometers into seven of the ADC pins on the ATtiny. So that's able to read all of those analog values and then report them back to my Cutie Pie. All I'm doing is adjusting values and showing them on this display here. You could use these up to nine of these analog inputs for anything you want on your project. The ATtiny 816 and 1616 Seesaw Breakout Boards. 1616, that's the most awkward number I've ever said. Uh, but there it is. Yeah, go go. Uh, if you if you didn't get them during the show, I think we still have some in stock, and you can use the synth stuffing coupon code on those. You won't get fifty percent off, but you will get ten percent off. That's not nothing. Uh, I think they're five dollars normally. So you get fifty cents off. Again, me with my math. Uh, all right. So next up, the much hyped Circuit Python Parsec. Let's uh, let's prepare ourselves emotionally. Here we go. All right. Here we go. For the Circuit Python Parsec today, I wanted to show you how you can use a UDraw peripheral with the WeChuck library. So you're familiar with the WeChuck, the little nunchuck for Wii. Uh, there is a community bundle library called WeChuck, and it supports a whole lot more than just the nunchuck, including this drawing tablet. You can see here it comes with a wired pen. It has pressure sensitivity, a couple of buttons you can press. The tip is also a button besides being pressure sensitive. Uh, and we can record the XY positioning of this as we press this down. Now, you can see at first what I'm doing here is I just have a little OLED display on the left here, and I'm tracking a little dot there as I draw. Uh, but now check what happens when I press the button here. I can draw some NeoPixels here, and I can change their color. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm mapping the x-axis to which NeoPixel I'm lighting, and the y-axis is the color. Do a little gradient there by going in a diagonal. 
Uh, and I'm even doing pressure sensitivity for brightness, so I can press on that and change the brightness as I go. The way I'm doing this, if you look in the code window here, is first of all, import from wechuck.udraw, import udraw. That's this specific uh, peripheral here. And then I'm setting up the controller as udraw on the Stemma QT uh, I squared C port of the board. So it's plugged in over Stemma QT using one of our little uh, wechuck adapters. And then the uh, key thing that's happening in the main loop is I cast these variables, position, buttons, and pressure, to be the controller dot values. Then I go and use those to extract the position X and remap that, the position Y and remap that, both to a position for my OLED as well as the position and color of my NeoPixels. Uh, and then I'm also reading buttons. So if a button gets pressed, it's true. So if the button is C, that's uh, C is, is true. That's when I'm uh, changing the color of my NeoPixels here. And if I press the Z button, I'm just uh, turning them off. So that is how you can use the UDraw class inside of the WeChuck library from the community bundle inside of CircuitPython. And that is your CircuitPython Parsec. <laughs>。look at that。look at that。how cool is that。uh。this is a um。kind of a just fun。let me lower the brightness a little there。uh。this is kind of a just a fun。toy for playing around with. It doesn't do anything in particular other than, hey, I'm having fun. Uh, but you can imagine that you could use this for a uh, fairly low resolution drawing. It doesn't have a, a ton of resolution. I think the um, range is about, I don't know, 1,200 or something in one axis and 900 in the other, something like that. Uh, so it's not super high res for drawing, but you could definitely use this for things like uh, a, a kind of like a version of a k-oscillator for adjusting a couple of synthesizer values for say reverb and delay or uh, a filter. Those are typical uses for this kind of pad for, for non-drawing stuff. Uh, you could use it as a, a mouse if you, especially if you had a smaller display like an 800 by 600 display for some reason. Uh, this would work pretty well. Uh, and I think it's just fun. Let me, let me show you here. This is the uh, connections involved since I didn't show those before you can see the uh, the key here is that all of these Nintendo peripherals for the Wii use I square C with this standardized connector, uh, and that plugs right into our little uh, uh, Wii Chuck adapter board here over Stemma QT, uh, and then I also got uh, my little display added on there as well. Uh, but once you get that hooked up, you can use anything from the guitar to the controller, uh, little um, uh, classic controller to the, I believe, the turntable. I haven't tried the DJ turntable on this uh, in a long time, but I'm looking forward to trying that out. Uh, guitars, I think any, any of the instruments that were uh, available for rock band should work. Um, anyone have any drums? I got rid of mine, sadly. Uh, so that's, the, uh, that's a super, super fun U-Draw tablet. Um, I think I might even have the game cartridge somewhere, but I don't think it was all that much fun. Not as fun as this. This is just the best. All right, uh, so that, uh, that'll do it from our standpoint of our uh, CircuitPython Parsec. Um, and just heading over the chat, oh, I was looking in the YouTube chat actually, Creative Eye says, hey JP, watching from Kenya, Africa, I'm a big fan of your channel. Oh, thank you so much, we're glad to have you uh, in the chat here today with us. Appreciate you stopping by. Um, all right, let's see. What is this device? What is this device you're showing? Andy Calloway, what do you have there? Looks like it's a piece of um, industrial equipment that, gets, that shows up in, in uh, movies as a prop a lot of the time. There's a Reddit uh, for that, subreddit for that. It's called, I think it's called something like, that's a book light. I think that's what it is. That's a book light. And it's, it's a Reddit for people who spot really common everyday uh, things that have been used as uh, as sci-fi or high-tech props in a uh, in a TV show or a movie. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's a whole YouTube video about it. Okay, <laughs> I gotta check it out. 
That's great. What is the thing? Is it a lathe? What is that? Some kind of motor? Part of a generator? I don't know what it is. All right. Uh, so let's see. That, uh, that brings us to working on our project here today. So um, I'm going to... Let me jump over to the workbench here. Uh, and I'll show you where, where things are at, how things are getting connected together for this, what the, some of the goals are with this. So we've got, uh, let me just pull open my Discord here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, so starting off, we've got the computer perfection. And this is the circuit board that lives inside here. Uh, and you can see we have a whole bunch of these metal uh, switches, sort of spring steel switches that get pressed by these plastic buttons. Um, and if you flip this up, you can see while they kind of all move because um, they're, they're joined together around the rim, it moves a lot more at this uh, little point here that contacts uh, one of the switches. So that one will go enough just to press that one. So, so they do work independently. Uh, there is a piezo buzzer here that I'm not using. I left that, I desoldered the wires from that and left that in there. Uh, otherwise, everything just came right out of there. Whoops. Uh, and it has a couple of 9 volt uh, battery connectors that were part of how it worked. Here's my uh, speaker or piezo connector. And then there's also, I showed this uh, before, there's also a switch built into the side here um, which gets contacted when the clamshell is opened. Um, so when this is in its normal position, when the clamshell goes all the way, it, it closes that switch. So that's actually how you turn it on. I may restore that functionality just because that, that's neat and uh, then I wouldn't need a separate uh, power switch. And, and the way to do that, by the way, if you haven't before, one of the better ways to do that with especially a small uh, switch is by grounding the enable pin on the microcontroller to the uh, to ground. So the switch just connects the enable pin to ground. Uh, that has the effect of turning off the microcontroller. Sorry, I'm just going to zoom this camera out a little bit because it was chopping my head off. Um, so for now, though, I have this out entirely because I've removed the 4-bit four four microcontrollers, Panasonic uh, Matsushita microcontroller that was there that ran the game. And I've uh, been able to plug in, zoom in here. If you see here, this is a set of stacky header pins with 0.1 spacing, uh, those are really nice and thin compared to other headers. So they actually work really well for piggybacking on that little uh, socket that the, the microcontroller went into. So I didn't have to desolder anything. I was able to just pull that microcontroller carefully and then put in a couple of sets of these uh, stacky headers. And then I can put regular jumper uh, cables, these, these nice deluxe uh, DuPont connector jumper cables into there. So that works really well for being able to um, test out how I think the wiring should work and then test out how the microcontroller is going to work with that. Uh, eventually, I could do anything from desoldering the socket and soldering wires into it uh, from below because that's where I want all my electronics to be. Uh, this needs to be flat on top because it's going to be uh, sitting right underneath there. These buttons poke, uh, or the, rather these switches poke up through um, the, uh, the little um, holes inside of the top there. Also, these are, I forgot about these. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we were looking at this. I forgot there were two more buttons that I haven't used for anything yet that I forgot to account for. Um, these two little pegs, these are ex sort of extensions for buttons. So there's these 10, but there's actually two more I forgot all about until right now, um, just because they're kind of hidden the way I normally have this on my desk. I, I'm looking at these switches and they're blocking the fact that there's actually two more of these switches here, so I gotta, gotta add those later. Uh, this was my temporary on-off switch after uh, 
desoldering those wires from the little lid switch there. Um, so that'll be, again, helpful for testing before I put that all back together just to, to rewire that. Uh, so what I was doing is uh, working with Jepler on the SynthIO uh, library, which has existed uh, for a while now. I just had never used it inside of CircuitPython. Uh, and it allows you to specify MIDI notes, which will play synthesis. Originally it was just, I believe, square waves, and now it's been extended to uh, allow you to use single cycle wave waveforms. So Jepler added in a sine, sine wave. Uh, I think there's pulse width modulation of some kind, but we haven't, uh, haven't dug into that too much yet. Uh, Todd Bot has been working on this. He sent me some code that had a nice sawtooth wave, which gives you a, a much richer, grittier uh, sound with a lot more harmonics in it. And so, uh, interestingly, the way the library was written, it expects you to send MIDI notes to it. So it, it takes in a value like 48, and then the library converts that to the proper uh, frequency tone to play. So I'm not using MIDI, but I am, when I press these buttons, saying, okay, we're going to use SynthIO to, pr to play a note 60, and that's going to corresponds to, to, a, um, to a frequency uh, that's a musical note. Um, so on the M7 here, I'd worked on just that synth code. Then on a separate uh, Metro M4, which has the same pinout, I was working on the button code. I've now merged the two together. Uh, I also have an I2S amplifier and a nice little um, enclosed speaker here. Uh, and let's see, with this thing on, what I should get is, uh, when I press these, it doesn't have to be metal or anything like that. In fact, it probably shouldn't be. Let me, uh, use a piece of plastic here. When I press these, we'll hear a tone. And I have it just droning. So I press one, it just plays. Uh, so part of my idea with this is to make sort of a moody drone synth of some kind. Um, right now I'm reading two of these switches and one of them allows me to just turn it off. So that sends the turn off all notes that are playing. Um, even though I only have one right now, it would turn off all notes that are playing. And I will, uh, my goal is to stack these so that you can play chords up to, you can play up to 12 notes. And in fact, maybe I'll add those two and we'll get the full 12 note polyph polyphony. I think that's the, uh, the max that the library in Synthio can handle on the M7. Um, and the other thing I can do is flip the left switch here. That's the mode switch on the original there. So that's what will poke up out of there. Uh, and that'll change the wave type. So right now this is a sine wave, and here's a sawtooth wave. And actually right now it's playing two at the same time. Just an artifact of my code. Um, if I press a new note, it'll drop the sine out. And now it's just sawtooth. and then turn them off. Um, so interesting things I found out about this, and I was looking at the circuit uh, on the show, I think it was last week or the week before. Um, the 4-bit microcontroller that was in here and the way it, it was uh, programmed did a whole bunch of interesting stuff without having a whole lot of I.O. Uh, it, do, it does not have enough I.O. pins to handle all of these buttons, all of these switches, and all of the LEDs. Uh, you can see there are 10 LEDs on there uh, with just one pin per. Uh, it's not quite a matrix, but what it, what it did was, I think it very rapidly switched pins from being inputs to outputs. So the um, LEDs are actually on the same pins as the buttons. And I started writing some code uh, to try to do that in CircuitPython, and it got really messy really quick. Um, so what I may do is, is concede defeat there and simply uh, cut the traces 
that are uh, connecting these LEDs and their resistors into the same circuit or same pins as the as the switches there, and instead just I, I probably can add a little expander, um, a little uh, PWM expander and handle all 10 of those LEDs really nicely and, and maybe you know be able to do some neat stuff with them like fading them instead of just on off. Um, and the same goes for these switches. They're not uh, all independent. They're actually kind of uh, interdependent uh, so that the position of this this value will change as this four position switch value changes. Um, so I need to dig into that more to see what what the sort of easiest way to get the most use out of these is. Right now, even though these are uh, three position switches, I'm using center for on, right for off, and left for off on that one. Same with this one. This one's a sine wave in the middle, or rather a sine wave on the right, a sawtooth in the middle, and nothing on the left. Um, so, and let's see if I, Yeah, you can see this, this center one is also, uh, some of its positions are the same as this one here, so it's turning it off. Um, so that's what I have running on this so far. I can't, unfortunately I can't uh, test it inside of the cool enclosure yet. Zoom out a little. Uh, simply because I don't have the clearance uh, to do that with, with all of that wiring in the way right now, but eventually that'll, um, I'll run that much, much uh, lower profile or underneath to get that uh, to get that to fit in there. Um, I did just for um, a test of it, I had most of it inside of here. If I just unplug, let's see, can I do, I don't think this will fit, will it? No, it's not going to fit up in there. Um, but I did have the microcontroller, since I didn't have this board on it yesterday, I did have the microcontroller and the amp and speaker inside of it, and it sounds good. It's, uh, it's kind of nice to have the sound emanating out of here. Um, it's possible that using a non-closed speaker that's um, mounted to the plastic would act as a soundboard and, and give me a nice effect, um, but these kind of do that by themselves, these enclosed speakers. Uh, and these also seem to run uh, lower current, um, the enclosed speaker. This one ro runs a little lower current than, than this guy here. So uh, since I'm running the amp, I think off of three volts, that's a good thing. I have less current to work with. Um, so that's the state of that. Um, I'll show you the code that's running on that. Mouse says uh, over in the chat, if there weren't enough IO pins, they should have just bought a different feather. There's plenty to choose from. <laughs> this was 1979, I think, uh, that Ralph Baer made this. And I, I read up some more on Ralph, and there's a really great collection of his um, uh, engineering notebooks, patents, uh, photographs of his workshop, photographs of his inventions in the Smithsonian as well as some other places. So if you look up Ralph Baer, B-A-E-R, uh, the father of video games, created the, the Magnavox Odyssey, really the first uh, home video game system. Prolific inventor and, and it seems like a really interesting, uh, neat guy. Um, so he was, he was doing, he did Simon, uh, the little memory game. I think a similar microcontroller as this one, but not the same one. But there, I think there were like three games that used the same microcontroller around that time. And he worked for a lot of different um, toy manufacturers. So his, his stuff is all over the place. Really interesting. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see. Let me open up the code that's running on there. And... Look at that. Uh, it is not this. This is confusing. Let me unplug that. Uh, by the way, these Wii accessories, uh, unlike the Xbox guitars and, and PlayStation guitars, the Wii ones always 
used the Wiimote, or rather the, the yeah, the Wiimote as the, um, the wireless controller. So they didn't have to, they were cheap because they didn't have to have, there's so much that this didn't have to have in it. It was just the I2C sensor essentially plugged into that uh, using this. So they always are inexpensive and lightweight and lack, they always have a nice big space for you to put stuff. Um, in fact, this one also has uh, a little spot, I think, where you could just tuck this, this connector in. Uh, seems like an unnecessary <laughs> little box there. You'd think there was like a battery or something in there, but there's not. Uh, there's also, by the way, a spot for the pen there. that in into space there. Uh, I got that one I think for a dollar at a yard sale or something like that, really cheap. Uh, okay, so code here for our um, computer perfection synth. You can see here some of the key things going on. I'm importing synth.io library and I'm importing keypad. Uh, I don't need random anymore. Um, the Keypad library, I'm setting up kind of two sets of things. I've got the buttons, and those you can see they're on pins D0 through D8 and then A5. Uh, and then I have right now two switches, and that's a sort of a different um, keypad object, which just makes it easier for me for my code to do the same thing with all the buttons and then uh, a different set of things with all the switches. Uh, then I have the setup for my I2C, or rather I2S amplifier, and that's on these pins D9, 10, and 12. Um, I'm setting up the I2S out uh, here for the amplifier. And then for the synthesizer, I've got a sample size of 128, and your volume, I think this goes up to 3600, 3200. Uh, so I have this fairly high, uh, it could go higher. And obviously you can hear there's a difference between the sine wave and the uh, sawtooth. And this is just kind of the, the nature of having a pure-ish sine wave versus lots of harmonics. Uh, square waves and saws, they'll always sound louder than like a triangle or particularly a sine. Um, so it, it might be interesting to have that um, change along with the, the wave type just to make the relative uh, perceived volume seem the same. Um, Hem asks, the synth IO looks amazing. Wonder if it'll work with an M4? Uh, I don't think it will. I, I think this synth stuff is, uh, requires enough speed that it's really going to work on the M7 uh, only. I don't think you'll have, have that work on the M4. Maybe a RP2040, I think. Maybe Todd, did you, are you, if you're in the chat, Todd Bot, I think had some of this working on an RP2040, um, but I, I don't think it'll work on an M4. Uh, I could be wrong though. The, the, the thing here is that it's not an Arduino and, and we did port the PJRC audio library, which runs on Teensy over to the M4 and that worked, but just the overhead of having the interpreted language of CircuitPython here uh, gives us less speed to work with, um, even though it's like a 500 megahertz chip on the um, on the the M7, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so then here's our sine wave setup and sawtooth setup, and you could uh, you could create other wave types. I've just got these two right now, um, and then I've got the synth object uh, here, which is synth equals synth IO synthesizer. Uh, and then a sample rate and uh, a waveform being used as the synth sound. Uh, and then the synth is told to play. So it just starts playing, but it's, it can have notes running or not. So it doesn't actually make any sound at first. Uh, I tell it we're going to be using a sine wave to begin with. Uh, and then in my main loop here, you can see I have two of these event loops for the keypad library. The first one says uh, event is button events get. The other one is uh, switch event get, and I could probably call this this first one button event and to, to differentiate it from switch event. Uh, so if there is an event, I'm giving the event uh, key number to this variable i, just makes the rest of my code sort of neater. Uh, if 
the event is that something got pressed, then the synth will do this, uh, which is release all notes and then press a new note. So this is where I think I can start to uh, look at the synth, synth library, which I, I know not at all. Uh, look at that for the um, how, how I can do polyphony. So one way to do it is to give it a list of notes. Uh, so I could create a queue of maybe which notes are pressed all at once um, or just always add to it um, so we can build up that list because this command actually is expecting a list. Um, and you can see here, synthio release all and then press, even though I'm pressing, let's say, um, the first button, which, which is going to be this MIDI note 64. Um, it has to be in the form of a list. That's what this synth, synthio command expects. Uh, so I give it the note list uh, index I, which would be zero for the first note. Uh, but then I also have to put in a comma and make it uh, like a tuple inside of quotes. So two sets of quotes and a comma. I didn't, I didn't have that at first. I was, I was like, why won't this work? And then I started adding commas and parentheses until it worked, which is my, my basic approach to a, uh, a list-like thing is, is throwing a, a type error about not being able to, to use, the, uh, use the list object. Um, what is the command? I wrote it down. It is... Uh, yeah, type error, int object is not iterable. So if I just give it an integer, it's not happy. Throw in an extra set of parentheses and a comma, it works. Uh, so I'm printing the note letter press. This is just part of debugging for me. Um, and then previously I was using this uh, just as a, I had a, a little function that would play MIDI notes when I was first testing this um, so that I can get rid of. Um, the released doesn't do anything right now, so that's just an artifact uh, since I want this to um, add notes. What I think I might do is change these to be toggles. So I can press something and it just toggles the state from being, oh, that note is one of the notes that's playing. Press it a second time and it takes it out. I think that would be nice for just building up these big um, chords. Uh, I liked Mouse's comment in the, in the chat here. Uh, Parentheses, comma, parentheses, parentheses, ha ha, parentheses, parentheses, comma, parentheses. It's appropriate. All right, uh, the switch event is similar. So uh, uses keypad, just checks for anything that happens on whatever objects were part of that uh, keypad uh, instance. And then if there is an event, I'm casting this variable s to be a key number of the switch event. Uh, if it was pressed, uh, which meant it went from off to on. If it is switch zero, uh, which is the one on the left on the computer perfection, then I change the waveform to a sine. If it's a one, I change the waveform to a sawtooth. Uh, and then you can see with the other switch, all I'm doing right now is just release all. Um, so all that, all that is likely to change if I start stacking up notes uh, in polyphony there. Um, so if you don't mind hanging around what I, for a moment and watching me, uh, try something, what I'll do is, uh, head over to, oh, here's, I, I think I might've shown this last week, but this was a nice, uh, uh, museum of design and plastics had some really nice photographs of the computer perfection here, uh, closed and open and missing the battery cover like all of them are, it seems. There's the box. Uh, my box is a little different, so that might have been a UK one or just an earlier iteration of it. Um, but that's the, that's the box there. Yeah, mine's from Lakeside, and I wonder if that was uh, distributed by someone else in the UK, because that one says GT, Action GT. Uh, is that the, the manufacturer there? Don't know. Uh, yeah, injection molded and manufactured by Action GT. Oh, interesting, huh? So it's for, it's it's designed by Lakeside Games, manufactured by Action GT, and they got their name on it instead of Lakeside for this version of it. That's wild. Um, okay, so what I wanted to do is try to dig into the SynthIO um, commands. So give me one second. I'm just going to look for. I might have a note from. Uh, Jeff, that includes a link, and that'll be a fast way for me to get it. So, one second. Uh, 
All right. Okay, I'm assuming this is updated. Uh, so SynthIO from file, you can throw a MIDI track at it and it'll try to play that, a .mid file. Uh, I tried that with a couple of MIDI files, but it didn't like the formatting of it, so there's, I've, I've got to play around and find out what formats it likes. Uh, and that could be another, another interesting way to use this, is to have each button play some arpeggio or melody or something like that. Uh, SynthIO MIDI track. Um, let's see. What am I missing here? SynthIO from file. Maybe track synthesizer. I blew right past it. Okay, create a synthesizer object. The API is experimental. Uh, two notes supported. The uh, Mimex RT10 and RP24 platform support up to 12 notes. So uh, 60 is the C4, middle C, approximately 262 hertz. Uh, you can pick a sample rate, and the lower the sample rate, the grittier and chip, more chip tuny it'll sound. But uh, we can, this I think we have a 128 on here right now, which sounds good. Uh, waveform, single cycle waveform. Default is 50% duty cycle square wave, um, and then it tells you you can you can uh, specify a readable buffer uh, assigned 16 bit for these other other uh, single cycle waveforms. Sample rate. Uh, okay, so pressed, sequence of currently pressed notes, max polyphony, press, turn some notes on, release then press, release all then press, release all. Yeah, so it seems like there's definitely enough in there to be able to um, uh, build up some, some polyphony. Uh, over in the chat, Blitz City said, I haven't been able to get it to recognize a MIDI file either, so if you find a trick in your travels, please let me know. Yeah, I wish there were one file, and, and they're binary, so you, you can't really find out that much about it, but I would love if there's like one file that the original author of this can point us to <laughs> that, that works, um, or if, if Jeff can look at it, um, at the code to see what it's, what it's not loving about the MIDI tracks. Um, okay, so let's try, let me try to adjust the code here, so... Um, let me bring this up here. Um, okay, so I've got release then press. Turn some notes off and on. All right, let's just do press. I'm just gonna build up notes. So whatever I press, it just adds to it. Um, so what I'll do is take that out of there. And this, if we press something, it'll just be synth, press, Uh, and then let's see if it just takes one in. Note list I. And let's grab this pile of wires here. And if anyone sees uh, mistakes or improvements as I go, please speak up over in the chat. Hey, FX Music, nice to see you. Sorry, I, I saw you, you popped up earlier over on YouTube. Nice to, nice to have you here. Um, so let's do a... By the way, here uh, you won't see this, but one, one thing I do often... Uh, let me close this. One thing I'll do often is when I go to save uh, a, a chunk of code, I'll just right click on the CircuitPython drive uh, code.py and duplicate it uh, just in lieu of proper um, file management <laughs> while I'm working directly on the disk. Uh, so bef basically I'm about to save this merged underscore code.py as code.py on my CircuitPython drive, but I right clicked on the existing code.py, duplicated it, so now there's a copy sitting there. So if I, if I do something terrible, I can go back to that. Uh, it's not great, but it's, it sort of works. Um, so I'm going to replace the existing code.py with this one. And let me... Disco tool-nm7. 
By the way, Disco Tool lets you just pick a unique part of the name. So I might have another Metro plugged into the computer, but I, I know this is the only M7 because I only own one. Um, so that, that should connect to that. Okay, so let's see. Let's... Restart. Okay, int object is not iterable, so even uh, you can see there, that's the error I was getting, line 51. So let's uh, check some parentheses and a comma in there. Yeah! Now let's see if I switch that waveform. Nope. So the new notes in the new waveform? Oh wait, what's going on? It's not reading my switches. Did I unplug something? What wiggled? Let's see, do they work on their own right now? Oh, I bet it's the position of that one. Sorry. Yeah, remember I said these switches are all interrelated. I, uh, I think my, sorry, I'll brighten this up and take that saturation down. My bottom switch here was in such a position that I wasn't able to get these red. Okay, so. This is on, and this is in. I think that's sine wave. Nope, that's the sawtooth. Okay, but here's... And then I should be able to change to sine. Yeah. And you can see it's just quieter. And that one has, like, some nice beating frequencies because it's a half step off. And just kill them all there. Um, I believe from something that Jeff said that there is um, essentially a unity gain mixing happening. So the volume when you add a note is halved, I think, uh, uh, or equalized to unity so that all the notes you have stack up to the same volume, which is great because otherwise you could get it um, seeming much louder when there are more notes and much quieter when there are fewer um, I could be butchering that explanation of it, but I think that's, I think that is, um, how that's working in there. Uh, okay, so, let's see, we've also got, uh, the release all, release then press. So turn some notes on or off, notes use MIDI numbering 60, would that be middle C? Okay to release a note that was not actually turned on. That's nice. Pressing a note that was already on has no effect. Yeah, so I don't need to use that. I was wondering if it was going to, like, stack up if I pressed one note twice. But it's not like it's increasing in volume or anything. That, that could be the gain thing I was talking about, or it may just ignore. Um, it sounds like from the uh, API here it ignores any notes that are already pressed. Um, so let's see, I could do, if we want to um, just play it more like a momentary switch, like a keyboard, what we could do is say, um, if an event is released, then we'll do synth dot, I think it's release. Is it? No. Is that not there? Okay, how do we release a note? Release, then press, release all, release all. Can we not release a specific note? That's weird. Really? I guess if I release and then press nothing? Okay, so let's try release. That's a, maybe something we could get. Release, then press. Is the pressed note optional? Let's find out. Mm. 
Yeah, that works. Okay. <laughs> so release, then press, but don't tell it to press anything works, works the same. So let me do this as a sawtooth. Cool. All right. So weird syntax, but that works just well enough. Um, I guess you could also use this, you know, to have one note just kind of iterate through some different um, uh, list of notes, like a like a simple arpeggio kind of thing. Um, so there's some options in there, but play around with it if you, especially if you've got an M7 or RP2040 that it'll work on. I think it should just be a, a Feather RP2040 or a. Um, would, would work maybe any any, any RP twenty four I don't know um, <clears throat> the uh, the library is called SynthIO and it's in the core module so you don't need to add it it's just there uh, also if you've got mid dot mid you can go to a lot of websites and have them generate new ones or pull them from libraries so uh, I think it says in here the kind of uh, it's got to be a single track MIDI file um, I tried making some with uh, Muse score. I didn't, didn't like those at all. Um, but play around with it. Synth.io. Um, and this is the, I'll put the link over in the chat if you want to go check out the, uh, the read the docs on it. Um, I think that's about it. There's not a lot to it. Um, the other, uh, since, since we're like, it's an experimental one, we're okay changing this API uh, and breaking things. So if you're interested in helping uh, break stuff and suggest stuff, this would be a good time to do it. Um, I would love to maybe open it up to um, having tuning overrides because you may find that even though this is claiming to be a middle C, it doesn't sound in tune with anything else uh, that you're playing. And, and so since it just accepts this note 60 uh, to be a 262 hertz, maybe having offsets or maybe just telling it, giving it frequencies um, and having a helper object for, for the MIDI stuff, that might be a, a sensible way to do it. Um, and uh, the other thing that we're looking to do is add uh, envelopes. So right now, as you can hear, it's very, harsh just on off, which sometimes can even give you little clicks. Uh, it'd be really nice to be able to do some simple like attack release envelope so that it can ease slowly or quickly into the note and ease out. Uh, I don't think we have to get wild with it, but an ADSR would be amazing. Um, ASR would be fine. ADR, AR, any kind of envelope would be helpful. All right. I think that's going to do it. So I will, um, I'm excited this is working this well. This is really the first time we've had a um, real synthesis, polyphonic real synthesis happening in CircuitPython. Uh, we've been able to play, uh, you know, samples and mix samples, really incredible stuff that we can do with the mixer inside of the audio library. That stuff's amazing, but synthesis is a little different animal from, uh, from doing sample playback. So this is really exciting. Um, and I will be working on f adjusting this thing to fit it into there uh, and see if there's any other features to add. I wouldn't mind doing a line out uh, instead of just a speaker so that I can then go into like a small reverb or something like that. That would be great. Have a little chorus and reverb on there. Uh, and I'll be attacking the lights, figuring out how to get these Lights work. I may, I may take one more effort to see if there's any reasonable way to do uh, lighting and buttons, but I don't know. It's a little wacky because it involves really fast um, switching of digital inputs to digital outputs, uh, which I don't think is going to happen fast enough to, to make sense. So, All right. Uh, before I go, I'll remind you, you can go and get yourself some cool stuff uh, for 10% off over in the store. So head over to Adafruit, type in synth stuffing, because we're stuffing synthesizers into things like that. 
Uh, and you uh, can use that coupon up till midnight tonight. Uh, all of the great freebie options we have are in effect. In fact, let me, since we're talking about coupons and the store, let me jump over here real quick and, and point out if you are uh, interested in picking up some stuff with a larger order, not fee, but free, adafruit.com slash free. Who doesn't like free stuff? Here's what you can get. Uh, if your order is 149 or more, you get a free KB2040. This little guy right here. Uh, if your order is $200 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping in the continental USA. If it's $299 or more, you get a free circuit playground express. Uh, we have those in stock now, which is awesome. And you can get all of them. They all stack. So if you get the circuit playground express, you'll also get the free ground shipping and the free KB2040. So um, order order has however much you want and get yourself 10% off using that coupon code synth stuffing right there. Um, before I go, I'll just take a look again at the chat, see if there's any thoughts or questions. Um, thanks, Jim Hendrickson. You have a great weekend too. Thank you, Andy Calloway. Thanks, Mouse. Inescu builds custom PCB would be cool as heck. Oh my gosh, with a display. <laughs> now you're talking. That is, that is a, a pretty cool idea. Consider making the scene from Monsters vs. Alien where the president, played by Stephen Colbert, tries to greet the aliens with funky tunes. <laughs> Wait, don't they blow up the poor aliens? I didn't remember that it was Stephen Colbert either. About that. Uh, thanks, Paul Cutler. Nice to see you and appreciate you stopping by. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for Adafruit Industries. I'm John Park. This has been John Park's Workshop, and I will see you next time. Uh, join us tomorrow for a deep dive with... Foamy guy, I believe he's doing one, Tim. Uh, we'll have shows starting again on Tuesday with my product pick of the week. Wednesday, we should have 3D Hangouts, return of the 3D Hangouts. Uh, show and Tell, I believe hosted by Liz with co-host Aaron. Uh, we'll have Ask an Engineer, and then this thing happens again. And cycle that endlessly. Uh, all right, thanks everyone. For Adafruit News, Jump Job Park. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.